If a tree falls in the forest and nobody's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Similarly, if your great leader accomplishes a wondrous task but nobody is around to tell the tale, did it even happen? This is a question Paradox tries to answer with their new game mechanics from the Legends of the Dead DLC for the game Crusader Kings 3. And although I think they missed the mark with the way the legends work right now, there are still some fun options to bring back ancient cultures into the medieval ages. Today, we will be reviving a group of people who made it impossible not to hear about their most impressive accomplishment. Because the only thing more impressive than creating one of the most advanced empires the world has ever seen is destroying that empire. Most people know the Goths as the barbarians who sacked Rome in the 5th century. But at the height of their power, Gothic leaders controlled kingdoms in Italy and Spain, while also inhabiting areas from the Eastern Alps all the way to the Caucasus. However, like most historical cultures, their success wouldn't last. The Gothic kingdoms were conquered, and the people who we consider to be Goths were pushed out to the fringes of the world, the very edge of society. And here they waited, for someone powerful enough to rekindle their warrior spirit and allow them to form an empire of Goths, the likes the world had not yet seen. What's going on with you? What are you talking about? All right, everyone. Here we are in the new... Huh? Well, the newest version of Crusader Kings 3 with the Legends of the Dead DLC. And if you're an avid CK3 player, you're gonna notice something right away. Our culture and religion and family uh, house is not on the bottom of the screen anymore. They moved it here on the left. Shocking, I know. I don't know how I feel about it, but I'm actually sure after playing this for, you know, a few hours, I'll get used to it. The other thing you should notice is we got a new tab the legends tab where you'll be able to see all the legends that are being spread around the world and how they're growing and stuff like that all that good stuff um there's also a plague map which we can't see right now because there's no plagues but we're gonna get in into that as we as we get into it so i am playing as this tiny little count uh he's actually a vassal of the byzantine emperor yeah we are located in the southern tip of crimea and the reason is, this is actually like a really cool area historically. Like I mentioned, we're trying to recreate an ancient culture, the Gothic people. And there were evidence of Gothic tribes living in this region until I think the 15-1600s, which is insane considering most Gothic uh, empires, kingdoms fell, you know, around the year um, like 600 or something. So yeah, if we look at the culture map, uh, we are currently Greek, which is a really good culture. Um, I'm also playing in 1066, just because I thought um, being a feudalized culture would be a lot easier in the 1066 start if I'm going to be having if I'm going to be fighting against a lot of these uh, tribal realms. We'll have a big tech advantage, so I think that's going to help. Because other than that, we are like surrounded by really strong realms here we only have 500 strength we got Kamania what the dog doing um extending right on top of us we got some other big kingdoms around us even um a Russian kingdom over here it's gonna be a very interesting game it's gonna be a tough game too and it's gonna take a while to get off the ground so first of all looking at the legends let me show you guys the legend that we have to complete um, with the maximum fame level in order to actually get access to the gothic culture and That legend is the gothic kings and in order to start this we need to have a little bit of gold a little bit of prestige But more importantly, we need to be a king. So um, We are quite a ways away from being a king We can't even become a duke because it's gonna be really hard for us to take Crimea away from um, the Comanians I might end up going for Wallachia or Moldavia just because they're a bit smaller so we'll have an easier chance of making them but really 
in the beginning of the game here, all I'm going to do is kind of like upgrade my territory, try to grow my economy, get a stronger military, and maybe I'll do some sneaky things against these tribal kingdoms. You know, maybe do some murder schemes, try to weaken them a bit uh, over a while, over a longer period of time, just to be able to uh, get a foothold here. Because the first thing we need to do is create a kingdom, and then after that, we can actually start the legend, and we can talk about the legend mechanics. We do at least have two castles in this um, in this county, so we can revoke the second castle away from this guy. So at least we have two holdings. It'll bump our gold income up a little bit. We have two crappy units of men at arms here, but as you can see, because we're playing as a Greek person. We actually have access to the cataphracts, which are really strong. Um, they're super expensive. You can see it costs 221 gold just to get 50 of these guys compared to your normal men at arms, which is always 100 men. So maybe we'll end up using these guys a little later. There is another way we could create a kingdom, which is um, if we were actually a duchy, I'd be able to show this. But there's always a decision you can make to create a new kingdom, but you need to own two duchies to be able to do that. But on top of that, you need to be an independent realm. And I kind of want to roll with the Byzantine Empire, um, at least until I get my legend finished. Because as you'll see when we get the legend, it's going to be a lot easier to spread the legend in the borders of the um, Byzantine Empire than if we were an independent realm. And the, um, the ultimate goal of this game, of course, is to recreate a Gothic Empire um, somewhere in closer to Northern Europe, although I'm not exactly sure where, but create a Gothic empire of old, maybe in Carpathia, maybe West Slavia. What? What the fuck? When I married that lady, you'll have noticed that I actually lost a little bit of legitimacy. So this is like a new, another new game, uh, gameplay mechanic here, which kind of acts like court grandeur but for your ruler where you get little bonuses based on how legitimate you are and you get more legitimacy for doing things like winning wars creating titles all that stuff um but it doesn't really matter for us right now because again we don't have any vassals we're already married and stuff so we're just gonna chill over here in the um southern tip of crimea and develop our lands a little bit Okay, so actually we can have a look at the plague map now that we have some plagues spreading near us and we got the Greek pox down here. Uh, you can see it has like different types of severity and the health traits can change depending on the plagues. Um, and if we let this play here, you can see how it spreads. Let's say if I click on it, you can see it has a chance to spread to neighboring regions, but that all depends on your plague resistance, which is a new county um, metric down here. Uh, and you can increase that by doing things like there's a few buildings like the hospices. Um, hospices which uh, increase your plague resistance. But then there's also a few decisions you can do to like seclude yourself which or seclude your capital. Which actually increases the uh, plague resistance by quite a bit. I think I'm also going to do my classic little, not really an exploit, but we'll put my uh, spy master. Let's see if we can get a better spy master. We'll put them on um, find secrets in the Byzantine Emp Empire capital in Constantinople, and then um, try to sell some of those secrets for uh, for cold hard cash to use to upgrade my uh, my territory more. Ho ho ho! What do we have here? Looks like this piece of land actually split off from Russia or Ruthenia, and they're allied to a couple of counts up here. Who probably would take a long time to actually get down here so I'm wondering if I could declare war on them now they you can see they do have a lot higher strength than me mainly just because of their allies uh yeah and let's actually declare war we can call our allies in 
we should be able to take the line pretty quickly. Okay, we're cro we're crossing a um, straight here to attack them, so we do lose a lot of uh, advantage modifier from that. But I still think just because we have more men, um, we're gonna win that battle. We actually stack wipe them, which is nice. Boom! There you go, guys. So we got a quick win in that war. I didn't even need my allies really. And now we have a whole extra county, which actually already has a level two farms and fields, which is going to make us a lot of money. Um, but we have our first plague affecting the barony next to our capital. So you should see that we have the decision now to enter seclusion. And that's going to keep our chance of infection down. But you can see we lose some stats from that. Um, I'm actually not going to do that because I don't really care if my character dies at this point. Uh, he's getting pretty old, he's infirm, melancholic, so I can't do much with him. But what I will do is isolate my capital, and you can see this um, loses control in the capital, which, you know, it, it, you loses it slowly, so it's not too bad. But you get 40 plague resistance, so we're going to try that. Very nice. So that was a fucking lie. Oh, never mind. Doesn't look like it was successful. So now my capital got infected. You can see we're going to be losing development from this infection. So you can see we're losing 5.4 right now. But um, once the plague ends, you do get an option to uh, gain some get to, to gain some development back. So we're, I will show you that in just a bit. Wow, everyone is getting typhus, guys. This is not good. So we just died. We're playing as my son now, who looks like he actually was able to heal himself from the disease. We're also going to isolate our capital. We should also enter seclusion with ourselves, because I definitely don't want to die. And the other thing I'm going to do is declare war against my blind brother. Did not see this one coming. Uh, just because I want this territory back under my control should be pretty helpful. And there we go. We took back this piece of land. Unfortunately, it still has zero development, so we're gonna have to slowly re increase the development growth here. I mean, the control growth there, but that's okay. Okay, and the plague ended. I, I think I missed the pop up, but there, anytime the plague ends, you have a pop up to either gain a little bit of development or spend a little bit of money and gain more development. Uh, we missed that, so we're only gaining one development per month from small disease recovery. But you can see that does last um, for five years. So five years of plus one development per month for free is pretty decent. Uh, I just noticed, however, these guys up here are getting attacked by their ally and they're really weak right now. So I think I'm going to run in for this duchy over here because if we can get these two duchies, we should be able to create the kingdom of... Um, Moldavia, which is what we need. Remember, we need a kingdom. We need to hold a kingdom on our own to be able to do the uh, um, the legend that will give us the Gothic culture. See if we can take their capital, I'm sure that would actually end it. Nice. So first we're gonna have to create this title and um, it only costs 175 gold. We're gonna gain some prestige, some legitimacy from that. And now that we are a uh, duchy, we can grant some land away without losing it. So I'm gonna grant this away to somebody. I'll give it to my half brother and we're gonna give him both these tribal regions just because uh, I wouldn't get any benefits from holding those anyways. And if we put her on managed domain, you can see that bumps us to five of five domains. So we can hold all this stuff here without penalties. And we're slowly going to be gaining control in all these regions. So we should see my military strength and my income go up a decent amount here now. Okay, so this time you can see we have the option to get major... Uh, 
disease recovery. You can see it's not that expensive, so it's pretty nice to pick that up. I don't think that's going to apply in my capital this time because I actually didn't have the plague here. Okay, yeah, so you can see in this county here where the plague was, we get five development for five years. So five development per month for five years is really nice. So if you're willing to pay a little bit of money, it's definitely good to do that after a plague hits your region. Okay, this guy's ally, seemed, he seemed to broke his alliance with these guys in the north, so we can declare war on him now. Huh? What? Where's the river here? Do you guys see a river? Oh, well. I'll pack anyway. So we're making some good inroads here. As you can see, we just need two more pieces of land in this duchy. 10 years away from getting burrs, which is going to let us get a um, duchy building in the capital. But I'm thinking we could go for the, um, the jousting grounds in the capital to give our heavy cavalry more damage, toughness, screen, everything pretty much. Reduces men at arms maintenance, which is the main problem with the heavy calves. Uh, as you can see right here, they cost 0.64 unused maintenance per month. So reducing that does help. Um, I could replace the militia camps, which I have currently boosting the archers with the uh, stables building, which will give them another 20% damage. So if we really boost the heavy calves, we could make it worth our while picking them up. So I'm kind of thinking that could be the plan. The only problem is we would have to somehow get Crimea from this guy, which doesn't really seem possible right now, to be honest. Just that, but now you have been promoted. <laughs> you are now one of my elite employees. Ooh, I just recruited a very nice knight from uh, this lady we had in our prison. And maybe I should just give it a go. I do have an ally. I forgot I had an ally I could call in. Okay, let's just declare war against this guy. We're pretty equal in terms of strength, so I'll have to be careful maneuvering my army. So I'll have to be careful maneuvering my army. Maneuvering my army. Man, I'm gonna I'm gonna break my monitor, I swear. Okay, look at that guys. We went in there with myself as a leader and absolutely spanked them around. Exactly what we needed. Let's take that back and then take their capital back. Nice, so we hit 100% there. It was a little bit uh, messy, but we were able to do it. Disband our army now. We should have enough of Mold Moldovia, Moldavia to um, create the duchy. And now guys, if we look at the kingdom, you should see that we only need 350 gold and we'll be able to create the kingdom. Uh, and then after that, we can start the legend. Oh, Kamania has reformed up here. What? 13,000? Holy crap. So we have enough gold now to create the kingdom. So let's go ahead and do it. It's gonna get us 400 prestige. Let's enter my royal court to hang our artifacts here. And there you go, guys. You can see from that pop-up, we can start the legend seed, the gothic kings, because we have the fame, we have the money, we have the uh, kingdom. So let's start it. We're going to start it about ourselves. And here you can see we now have our gothic kings legend in the capital, and it's going to spread. It has a percent chance to spread to neighboring regions if you own them. But you can see I don't have a chance to spread into a region I don't own unless I would click on this guy, the um, head of uh, Kamania, and get him to promote legend. Which you can see you can pay them to do so, but often they won't be willing to do this unless they're friends with you or at least like uh, follow your religion or something. Um, but another thing you can do is uh, appoint a court chronicler. And these guys are pretty important. You can see this guy has average skill, so um, he'd probably be okay at spreading. But I do remember I just have a couple of my daughters who hit, who are uh, just were got to 20 years old. So I'm gonna sort by uh, diplomacy because it's a combination of diplomacy and intelligence that makes you a good court chronicler. 
she'll get married to this guy and now if I go to my legend of port a person you can see this guy is good and now if we put it on this little um, herald thing here it's gonna cost 2.9 gold per month but it's gonna have an increased spread chance of 40% which is really nice you also have to pay a maintenance for the legend itself um, but you get a few bonuses and as the legend progresses you get more bonuses for all the regions that support it uh, it is quite expensive to have these things, but you know, you got to do what you got to do to bring back the gothic culture. So the whole reason you want to spread your legend to different um, baronies is to increase the quality. You first have to get it to 100 baronies and then to increase it to a mythical legend, the final tier, you have to get it to 300 baronies. So that's kind of the whole point. We're spreading our legend here, paying all this money to do that. And you do need to get to a mythical legend to be able to uh, to be able to get the gothic heritage as your culture when you diverge it. So we're going to be going for 300 baronies and right now it is pretty slow, although we did just go up one extra county. We love that. And there you go. Now we have three. Oh my goodness. So look at this. The Byzantine Emperor um, has a pretty good chance of accepting to spread our legend mainly because he has a, a great opinion with us i wonder why oh we're friends with him i didn't even know that that's perfect so we can ask him to promote the legend he's gonna start doing that now and you should see it's gonna start spreading all throughout the byzantine emperor empire now which is really nice it's really growing quick now look at this guys gothic kings is making it to a barony near you oh okay so we're already at 100 baronies, so now we just need a little bit more money. Can we ask our- okay, we can ask our head of faith for gold. And now I think we can increase the quality. That was really quick actually, I didn't do it this quick in either of my practice games, which is pretty crazy. Um, so now that we hit 100, we can increase the quality here. And now you can see we, uh, we get a new decision. Increase we get more legitimacy if we were to finish it now go to the next mythical one We'd get more legitimacy um, And then here you can see we may select the heritage and language from your legend Legendary culture when you diverge the culture. So that means we can become a gothic heritage uh, Culture Yeah, we'll be a true goth and then maybe we can start working on I don't know breaking away from the Byzantines fighting some uh, tribal regions uh, you can see the legend does cost a lot more to maintain now. It costs five gold, which is pretty much cutting into our entire gold income. But it is growing really quick, so I cannot complain of that. We might actually be able to finish this legend with our character that we have right now. Oh, I'm going to blackmail my Byzantine Empire friend for 300 gold, guys. Wow, it pays to be friends with the Byzantine Empire Emperor. And there you go guys, we hit 300 already. We actually still have to wait 10 months. I think it's like 10 years or five years you have to wait from when you start a legend to finishing it. So yeah, we won't be able to increase this, or we can increase the quality right now. We're gonna lose some gold from this, but the legend will keep spreading, which doesn't really hurt us. But we will have to wait 10 more months until we can, until we can finish the legend. October, November, and there we go. Okay, so we can complete the legend now, guys. Let's do it. Dear God, it's beautiful. So what you get kind of from these legends are each county that like has this, the uh, has a legend here is gonna get the bonuses from it. So like, I mean, from the three baronies in this county where my capital is, we're actually getting 6% from the legend from each of those. So that's an 18% development increase bonus from there, which is pretty cool. Let's get a better steward here and promote um, culture just to see how much dev growth we're really going to get from that. And yeah, it's we actually get a pretty healthy amount. Uh, you get some other stuff as well. And we also have these... Uh, effects from like the pop-ups but there were some pop-ups that give you a 20% discount to building construction that I've seen in other legends which is also really really cool but the main reason we did this guys was so that when we go to our culture if we want to diverge and create a new culture you can see 
we can choose the gothic heritage making us allowing us to recreate a gothic culture in the year 1121 unfortunately you don't really get you don't really get any like crazy bonuses for being gothic like there's no cultural traditions that you get you can just switch these around maybe to make them more of a gothic culture that you would want but it does add an element for the role players out there i know well some of the my favorite way to play ck3 is to do a historical game based on you know an empire or a culture that did something really cool in the past and then recreating them now in the future so it adds a nice fun element um to your games like that because at the end of the day there's no end goal in crusader kings 3 the goal is whatever you make so that's pretty cool but it would be it would have been pretty cool if they had at least one or two traditions that were unique to these to these ancient cultures in the game that you could only access through doing the legend unfortunately that's where i think they kind of missed the mark with this update uh so yeah i won't change my language we'll keep greek as the language we're gonna go with the gothic heritage i'm gonna take bellicose because i feel like it fits the goths uh we're gonna name our Culture Neo Gothic. Horse breeders would have been really good. But we don't have any. Oh, at least eight size. Wow. Can we do that? Can we get eight things of light horses just to get the discount here and then pick up um, horse breeders? Because I would like to get heavy cavalry maintenance and recruitment costs down. That would kind of be really good. A few moments later. Oh my goodness, guys, I'm gonna ask him for money from the Pope here, and we should be really close. We just need to wait like two more months, maybe. Okay, let's ask for money, demand payments, 50 gold and 55 gold. Perfect. Okay, guys, so so we have 680 gold. Let's go to our light horseman. Yeah. We'll create eight yeah, of yeah, these. Yeah, 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 yeah. That puts us just at enough. Now we can diverge our culture. Oh no, do we have to wait for this to replenish? Yes! Oh my God, dude. Don't die, don't die. Whatever you do, don't die. Okay, boom. We hit 800 light horsemen. We can swap Byzantine traditions for horse breeders. We're just missing, oh my God, we're missing like 100 prestige. God damn it, EA. Oh god, okay, wait, let's create this duchy. I don't even know where this place is, but we're gonna create it, and now we're gonna diverge from Greek to the Neo-Gothic culture with a bellicose tradition. I'm kind of planning on, like, making all of my men-at-arms maintenance really low so we can have a ton of cataphracts. You can see, heavy cav, we're gonna be getting a 25 discount just from the culture in terms of maintenance and 25% discount in terms of recruitment costs. So, to a new era, new people, we are now the Neo-Goths. Where did this spawn? So we got some Neo-Goths like kind of all over, but I feel like these places have pretty high development, so that's actually good. So yeah, I can choose what to research now. Let's go Battlements for now. Let's go over here and completely destroy my Light Horsemen. I honestly don't want Light Horsemen. I'd much rather have Cataphracts, which you can see only costs 130 gold. It's free I estate. don't remember exactly what the what the undiscounted cost is, but I can tell you that's a huge discount on Cataphracts. And even the unused maintenance at 0.42 is really not that bad. Man, if we can get a decent amount of Cataphracts in our army, I think we'll just steamroll a lot of these... Uh, these other kingdoms nearby to us, but we need to increase our military strength quite a bit first. Okay guys, so we ended up dying. Um, we're playing as our son. We lost a bit of land, which is not the best, I'm not gonna lie. Well, I see what a magnificent pair of bananas. Oh, great heavens! Oh my goodness, guys. We're losing 18 development per month in the capital right now from a plague. Three from each barony that's infected, plus 100% for being susceptible to plague. Okay, if I can increase my opinion with my brother, I'm trying to sway him. Because if I can increase my opinion with him, I can revoke his land. But another way I can do that is by putting him as my marshal. You can see that gives him plus 40. Now if we go to revoke, what do we have? 100% chance. Okay, perfect. Yoink. 
There you go. So we took his land away from him. We're at six of six counties now. That should also get rid of the faction. And let's go ahead and pick up our first regiment of cataphracts. Pick them up. Let's actually pick up two regiments of them. So we get a hundred. And then here we're going to have to replace this building with, of course, the stables to boost the heavy infantry damage when we have enough gold to do that. So it looks like Kamania has been severely weakened. Um, and they're a child. I'm going to declare war on them, but I actually don't have any claims for holy wars because somehow they converted to orthodoxy, which is a bit annoying. So I'm fabricating a claim right now. Um, my, my religious council member sucks though, so it takes a while to go through. Okay, so my claim went through on Kamania. They're currently getting invaded by these guys, but I feel like we could take them... Here is our super powerful army with our 150 beautiful cataphracts doing almost 200 damage at this point. Um, let's see what would happen. Oh wow, actually I probably don't want to attack them here on wetlands because if you look at the cataphracts, they're really bad in wetlands. They lose 80 damage as well as some defense and pursuit. Yeah, I definitely don't want to attack in wetlands. I think I'll just chill out here until these guys leave. And now I'll probably go and invade. Oh man, guys, that was a tight little battle there. What did he say? Um, but we were able to win. So now we are just one county away from having the entire duchy of Crimea, which we need because we want the uh, the duchy building down here for sure. So we finally have control of Crimea, which is really the whole reason we're playing here, is to be the Crimean um, Goths. I'm also keeping a close eye on the Byzantines, because I would like to maybe do an independence faction. Like, I think we're probably ready to go on our own. Other places are a bit stronger than us, but we have some beefy men at arms. And we have some good alliances um, at that. So I think I probably will start an independence faction. And let's say if we have like a bunch of people who want to join it, then so be it. Okay, so we got windmills and guilds. So you can see now we have, we have two empty building slots down here. I'm not sure. I think I'm going to do water mills because I have a lot of building to do in this county still. Even though the other one gets me more development, I think this one's going to save me more money. Money! So yeah, I'm just kind of working on my military here, as you can probably see, guys. Um, sorry, on my economy, we're going up to 21 gold per month. Once we really start pumping economy, I'm going to buy some more men at arms and then we'll probably be ready to conquer um, some other lands. Ah! Oh my goodness. So I had some raiders um, in my territory and I absolutely stack wiped them. I had a bit more men, but honestly, pretty even battle numbers wise. I think the difference is my cataphracts are doing work at this point, guys. Uh, I also went ahead and built the uh, military schools, like the knight duchy building in my second duchy. Uh, if you're going military, this is probably the best duchy building, unless you're trying to boost a certain type of men at arms. But you can see it gives you two extra knights, 25% knight effectiveness, an extra men at arm um, regiment size as well as lowers the cost of your maintenance which our army is pretty um considering how big our army is it's actually not that expensive like we have the whole thing raised right here and you can still see we're making 13 gold per month so we're making some bank right now and uh, i wanted to show you guys just how strong these cataphracts are i am currently boosting them 155 percent from their station holding in my capital and they do 306 damage, which is absolutely mental. I think I'm just gonna go for an independence war and I might press the demands right here. Round one, 
fight. You underestimate okay, my war it is with the Byzantines. Now, my military strength is really high, and we're going to get more men-at-arms from this as well, because we were paying him a certain amount of tax uh, in terms of levies. Uh, I'll upgrade my cataphracts to 250, and then let's raise my army here. I'm also going to actually call in on my allies. Why not? And they only have 4,000 military strength of their own, so we're pretty even right now, and on top of that, I'm like... Uh, my army is kind of a beast right now, so I'm just going to wait till these guys leave and then maybe I'll try to take the capital for myself. Time to abandon ship. Are these guys coming to attack me or what? I'm dying. Uh oh. It would be really good if we could finish this war before die here oh god help me okay very nice so we hit 100 percent. we just took some more land we didn't really have to fight the byzantines that much but let's disband everything and there you go guys we're now our own independent yeah. kingdom it's beautiful wow. okay so it looks like our character here finally passed away um, I doubt there's going to be any factions, to be honest. We don't really have uh, vassals that are that strong, and they shouldn't hate us that much. So I need to kill my brother somehow, because he has my second duchy. This, this is not okay! Um, I'm probably going to murder him. It's time to go! <laughs> oh man, so... <laughs> At least we got to stack wipe those um, those raiders in the north, and I gained 400 prestige from that because I actually led the army myself. And you can see, of course, the cataphracts did crazy damage. Okay, and the murder scheme with my brother is up to 93%. Hopefully that's going to go through this time. And what I need next is some claims on, uh, on these people around me, because I think I do want to end up making the Empire of Carpathia. I think that would be really cool, the Gothic Empire of Carpathia reborn um but i need to get some way of declaring war on hungary because right now i can't fight them uh they don't have any allies and they have six thousand men so i'd probably be able to take the land away from them but i just need some type of claim on their entire kingdom another day another victory for the og taking down the sweats the so looks like ass. we successfully killed our um brother so my plan to get claims on hungary is um i'm gonna go for profit here reform my religion we're gonna create a new orthodox faith with the pursuit of power giving us an invasion causes belly and a, a conquest causes belly against neighboring rulers so i think that should give us access to declare war for the entire kingdom of hungary which is pretty much the entire um empire of carpathia and uh yeah other than we won't have Valachia, but we'll still be able to create the empire and i think um, we will have completed our uh, our Gothic Crimean Gothic run of bringing the Crimean Goths from their tiny little foothold in southern Crimea all the way to the Empire of um, Carpathia. Oh my God, it's like a jinx. The second I say I talk about my little plan here to uh, invade Hungary, they haven't had an ally in like ten years. They ally themselves to Georgia and Bohemia, both who are incredibly strong. I'm going to go actually go on um, an expensive pilgrimage here just because my guy got the infirm trait. He's not doing too well. And I think actually if we're able to get like 5k prestige or 5k prestige, we can just reform the religion right away. And I don't need to wait for profit because I'm worried my guy won't be able to make it. So hopefully we get a good amount of prestige from this, but we should be able considering I just spent $600 on this uh, pilgrimage. That was kind of, I didn't actually get as much as I would have liked there, to be honest. But let's just see if we go to create our new faith. We're missing what? We're missing like barely anything. Come on. One more month. Okay, perfect. Um, I don't know what to call this. Uh, okay, so I think we're ready here. Pursuit of power. Pursuit of power is going to hurt our direct vassal opinion. But hopefully we'll be able to survive with our really strong men-at-arms. 
So there you go, creating the new faith. Um, it's spread a little bit, not that much. At least this lady is uh, following it, which is good. And so is her son, and she has a lot of land and military strength. So it's important that we're going to keep her happy with us. And then here you can see we can holy war for kingdom. It costs a good amount of piety, which we don't quite have yet. But at least we'll be able to take the entire kingdom of Hungary away from her. Um, now that we're this new religion. So I did a little war here for one of these duchies. Um, trans uh, Transylvanian Alps. I gave it to my son. It started a war with... Uh, well, these people were also trying to get it, so now I'm at war with them, and you're going to see 3,500 men are going to attack my my army, but as you can see, it's just pure domination from my part. Absolutely disgusting. Oh, uh, what the heck is this? Looks like we got war declared on us by this guy. Really, dude? And another really? Thing, you're ugly. Holy War. I guess he's going to have a bunch of allies that join in. But if I just like do a quick capture here of his capital, what's he going to do? I'm pretty sure the war is just going to end. Oh no! Anyway! No way, guys. So we had our army of men-at-arms here with 1,800 soldiers. They come in off a boat with 6k and we still destroy them in the battle. That is crazy. I'm gonna murder the um, the queen's the queen of Hungary's husband, who is the son of the king of Georgia, and he had the best chances at us um, succeeding on this, which is good. But what I can do also is invite some people. Uh, there are a lot of people who can join. It doesn't look like they offer that much. Uh, success chance but i guess that's okay we can still probably get this up to a, a good percentage oh so it looks like the guy we were trying to kill died from a plague <laughs> so that's kind of perfect honestly let's check on her so yeah she has no alliances now the only problem oh she's actually sick with the flux as well very interesting the only problem is she does have a very strong military 10k approximately um, and if I do declare war on her, the other problem, especially if I do a holy war, is you'll see she's going to get a few alliances. These guys aren't too strong, but if this guy decides to join Bavaria, which he probably will, because it's a holy war, so all the Catholic can, rulers can join, um, that's another 10,000 men. So uh, I'm really not too sure what to do here. I could do a uh, invasion war, but I need to be exalted amongst men to do that and i don't think i'm gonna hit that with this character okay so it's been a few months and now if we were to declare war against um hungry right now holy war for kingdom the only person who's gonna join bavaria is not gonna join anymore so the only person is this little uh county right there they still have a good amount of strength um they're allied to this person down here who has like 2500 they themselves have 1300 I really wish we could just gain one more stewardship because that would really help my military strength here. But I do have the option to declare war at them right now. If my wife could die, that would be like the best case scenario. She's 70 years old for some reason and not dying. Oh, we can actually divorce her. Okay. But then we lose some piety. Oh my god. Okay, let's try to divorce the wife. We will marry based off of um, uh, stewardship for our new wife. And now when she's on managed domain, you can see that brings us to seven of seven, which is gonna bring our military strength up a lot. We can get money from the wedding. Um, I just need quick piety now. Okay, we're gonna do a funeral, which is gonna get us piety. Oh my God, I really don't wanna die now. My health is poor. Okay, there we go. So we gained a bunch of piety from that funeral. Um, let's have a look at Hungary again. Let's see if we declare war. I'm at an activity now. I can't declare war. Okay, now it's over. I gained some stuff. Two days, finished funeral. Okay. 
I think, guys, I'm ready to do the Holy War. You can see we have a max of 6,000 troops, but the quality is what's really high. Okay, guys, so I started the war here. You can see they got 12,000 men, which is double my army size right here. But again, we've got the superior army. 12 knights. We have the advantage in terms of knights. We have the advantage in terms of beast men at arms. We're going to have to see what it says is going to happen here. But I feel like we could potentially win this. They have a total strength of 21,000. And I called a couple allies. I called in my Venice ally and Sweden. So we have 17,000. But this first battle here is going to be really important. Oh, they're going to get the defender bonuses too. Okay, but we killed 4,000 of their men. Even though we lost quite a bit, we still killed a ton of dudes. Okay, so I'm getting a few better knights now because uh, knights are always going to help you in big battles. And because since we lost that battle before, well, we lost it, but you know, we still killed double their men. We lost a bunch of knights. So if I raise a local army here, you should see we get four knights from that. To go again. We go again, boys. I guess I'm to go again. We go again, boys. Um, and do we want to attack up here? Maybe because that last battle they had the defender bonuses. But if they're attacking in my mountains where we actually have simple earthworks giving us a defender bonus, maybe what I want to do is attack them right here. And even though they have pikemen and stuff, I think we could stand a pretty decent chance at beating them because they're gonna have to run in from all the way up here. It's gonna take them a while. I actually really like our odds in this battle here. Yeah, look at this. So right off the start, we're getting defender in, defending in mountains. We have a uh, bonus from my martial skill. I'm actually not the best commander, but I'm not too bad. And let's see, as people run in here, our allies are going to run in as well. Oh yeah, guys, we're going to clean up in this battle, I think. Oh, delicious. Oof. So we lost 800 men, but we killed almost 6,000. Gives us a good amount of war score, and I think we can now make our way, make our inroads towards the capital. I have to be careful with my supplies. I might want to split my army and try to uh, get some supplies back. Or actually, let's just attack them here, because they're pretty weak. Things like daughter. Another huge battle. We had less men, but we killed 5,000 that time. They're offering us white peace. We're not going to be taking that. No chance. Um, let's see if we can replenish some of our uh, supplies. That would be pretty helpful. I might get rid of a few levies just to keep my gold income. Just to keep my gold income positive. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh that's good. Goodness. That's good. It's it's enough slices. Okay. So another pretty big victory there. Five thousand people killed again. Um, they're getting weaker. Okay. So there it goes, guys. We just died. Okay, so I ended up having a kid, which I didn't even realize. So now we have this one-year-old um, who has these three counties, which is really not good, considering it knocks all my men-at-arms out of uh, where they were being stationed in here. We're losing a bunch of gold now um, from not having that. Oh my god. I think I'm going to have to do a murder against this baby. And I probably have to waste some gold on bribing some people to join it. Oh, this is very squeaky. We also only have nine knights somehow. We lost a ton of knights from our army. Still did some good damage there though. And we're actually at 86 
percent so really if we just take a couple more pieces of land we're probably gonna be good uh oh my god man we're losing so much money okay we killed our uh sister at least we got our land back and it's all at 100 percent loyalty right okay perfect so we're gaining money again we're not losing money we're at 94 percent let's go here this is better <laughs> oh my god we we're actually holding off that army of 12,000 men with just our 4k dudes that is crazy that is crazy okay 96 percent. honestly if we just take one more county we're gonna have the we're gonna win the war so let's take this land right here it'll take us to 100 boom there it is and it's a uh, holy war too so we're gonna get all of this territory let's enforce our demands we gain a lot of legitimacy and oh my god guys look at all this territory i'm gonna do a little quick granting montage and uh i'll see you guys after i've divided all this land Oh yeah, and, 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 if we look at the Empire of Carpathia, you can see we just need to create another kingdom title in here, but that's pretty easy, and then only pay 200 gold, and we'll be able to create the beautiful empire. But already, look at Moldo Moldavia, the kingdom is massive. You've got mail. Okay, here come the, um, how many do we got? 31 thousand catholic populace rising up against us oh boy here i go killing again so we defeated all those peasants who rose up against us and we actually have a lot of gold right now. Our tax income's looking good. Let's create the Empire of Carpathia. Um, very nice discount we're getting. Instead of a thousand gold, we're only paying two hundred. We're gonna get a lot of prestige, some good legitimacy from that. We got a beautiful little hat here now, marking that we are a great empire. Look at that, guys! Perfect. Okay, guys, so look at that. We have created our beautiful Empire of Carpathia with the Neo-Gothic culture, um, with the Gothic heritage. We have recreated, um, we've recreated the Gothic people and, sp and um, spread those people to a beautiful new Empire of Carpathia, all being... Um, being run out of Crimea, the living place of Goths for almost maybe a thousand years. And we brought them back in the year 1200 AD. So I think the Empire of Carpathia is in good hands right now. We have been um, led to victory by mainly our cataphract units, which you can see are getting a 190% boost to their damage giving them almost 350 damage, 81 toughness. These guys are pure beasts. We also have crossbowmen who are quite strong, almost 70 damage on the crossbowmen. And um, some good trebuchets to round out the beautiful army of the, um, the Neo-Goths. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Um, got to show a little bit of the new DLC. Honestly, there isn't it doesn't really change that much in the game, just adds a couple new mechanics to play around with. But for all of you, um, for all of you role player, all of you historical role players out there, you're going to have a lot of fun creating these ancient cultures and, you know, recreating beautiful empires of old like we did here today. 
So, that being said, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video as always.